Good. Yeah, let's go. <coughs> so, um, basically today it's um, TechPlot 2022 in a nutshell. Um, I will explain you a little bit about, if you never have seen TechPlot before, um, I will of course introduce you what is TechPlot and I will give you uh, additional hints about what comes next in TechPlot. Yeah, but first about me. My name is Jens Wackel. I'm a physicist and working as a technical consultant. Um, it's still for Genius Graphics. That's the formal name, but um, it's a TechPlot Europe is a um, yeah is valid too. If you if you uh, tell it um, TechPlot Europe. Um, my job position. What does it mean, technical consultant? Uh, what I'm doing is um, if you do not have a license of TechPlot, then I um, I show you the product and I try to convince you from the product. And if you already have the product, then I want to um, make you a happy customer. And this means that I give you trainings and you can I give you con the consultation. Let's say um, that you really use the software. Um, that's very important for me. Um, if you have never seen TechPlot or heard about it before, um, in TechPlot we have sort of a different flavors, I would uh, call it. Um, so let's say that you have huge data sets and then TechPlot 360EX is the right choice for you. And uh, if you want to write out your data from your cluster, let's say, then parallel tech IO MPI uh, would be the right choice to uh, write out your data, and then there's a specific format you can choose, which is called ZAPS or Node on Demand, but I will spend a few more words about it later. If you have to do with parametric studies, um, then um, I would speak about numerous data. Let's say that you have 100 simulations, um, which you do for one of these parametric runs or so, and then TechPlot Chorus would be the right choice uh, for you. And uh, I just show you an image today. I will not introduce you to the product, but um, you should know, which is very important. If you see um, those, let's say, flavors here, all um, all are together included in your uh, TechPlot product. So it's not that you have to purchase something else. Everything is included if you have maintenance, uh, like mentioned before. So TechPlot course would then be the right choice. Uh, TechPlot, of course, works for measured data, too. And um, here, um, I would personally use TechPlot 360EX2 um, if I'm in the academic field, because there it's the same pricing. So focus would be um, the right choice if there are different uh, prices and do you really have small data which have to do with experimental data. And then focus may be the right choice for you, but um, if you are an academic, at least in the academic field, then TechPlot 360 is a super set, I would say, um, compared to Focus. So you would use TechPlot 360EX for measured data like wind tunnel, PIV data, and so on, too. And um, the last thing is to, to mention is that, Py, that we have a Python API, which is called PyTechPlot, and um, this is used for automation. We have different options like macros, but Python is um, now the main choice of our customers uh, to automate tasks with uh, TechPlot and so on. So uh, what is unique about TechPlot? If you have never ha heard about TechPlot, so I'm not sure if, if you're someone new uh, in the audience. So, And what is so unique about it? First, you can work on every operating system. So we, you can work with TechPlot. On, on Linux, on Windows, or Macintosh computers, no problem. Then it's very interactive, so you uh, really interactively use it, but if you want to automate your tasks in your workflow, uh, then you can use it in a batch job too. So for example, you have macros on Python to do that. TechPlot is completely customizable. So you have a so-called quick macro panel where you can put in your macros or Python starter scripts um, which is uh, very exciting. Um, then we have, um, which is super important for our customers, if I ask our customers, what would you say? What is the biggest thing about TechPlot? Why do you like it so much? And then I often hear because the plots are looking that good. Yeah? So the great plot quality in all graphical modes um, uh, is available. And all graphical modes means that in one application in TechPlot, we have the 3D mode, um, 2D mode, which is mostly for, let's say, contour plots, where 3D is perhaps volume visualization. XY for line plots, we can do polar line plots or sketch sketches, so you can even draw with TechPlot. And we have awesome possibilities for animations. 
So TechSort is a general post processor, which is independent. What does that mean? Uh, imagine that um, you have a um, package like, uh, don't know, whatever packages you may use, but um, um, we are independent, which means that obviously we have to be able to load as many data formats, um, um, yeah, as many as we can, and we have a lot. We have a big bunch of data loaders for all of the different formats. Formats. So what not will happen is that um, a company decides we will not push forward our post processor anymore because this is exactly why we exist. Um, so we have a general post processor for all different uh, codes. Um, in TechPlot, we organize our plots in frames and pages. Yeah, uh, this is something very exciting. So you can completely create your document uh, using completely TechPlot, which I will of course show you later. Um, then we have a reuse possibilities for your work, which means that we have uh, layout files. We have style sheets, which uh, makes uh, working fast. And we have macro uh, language and we have Python. And I will show you, show you um, all of this today. Um, and TechPro is optimized for speed with huge data sets. And that's uh, the first thing I will show you in my little um, overview about TechPlot. Um, when I speak about huge data sets, um, how this can work is the following. <clears throat> we, um, we have a new technology included, which is, so, uh, which is called subzone load on demand. Yeah, you, you can write out your data, for example, with um, uh, TechIO MPI. And what does it mean? It means that it automatically, your data set would be um, separated into, into, into little blocks, let's say. Yeah? Um, you, you have to do nothing. TechPod does everything automatically for you. And what it means is that, let's say that this is a 3D volume, and uh, this is the original data set on the left side, and forget about those lines here uh, in the middle. So um, what would be needed if you load everything together, um, it would uh, waste, of course, a lot of RAM. In TechPlot, this is not the case, because with the uh, subzone load on demand technology, um, TechPlot, here in this example, let's say this is an ISO surface from the left side or something, and then um, the ISO surface would activate only parts of your data set, and all the grayed out blocks here would not even be loaded. And that's subzone load on demand, and this helps um, to very fast work with huge data sets. Um, and you can, of course, try it out. I will tell you in a second how to do that. So how do you write huge uh, tech plot files from your cluster, for example, if you, if you have your own solver? You will use TechIO MPI on your cluster, um, where the sizzle, um, the subzone load on demand, uh, usually it's called sizzle, uh, is a simple switch. So um, once again, you have to do nothing special about having this format. This is absolutely uh, a no-brainer. Um, and the libs are already installed. So if you check your binary directories, you will find the TechIO library um, uh, there. Um, if you want to try it out, that CISL format, then you can do something very simple. Let's say that you have a data set from another so software, let's say a huge data set from Fluent or whatever. What you can do then is to load first the data set and then simply go to write, file, write data, and then you write it out. So in the end, you have a CISL file, and then you could, for example, for a test, restart TechPlot and check how fast that is. And this could, of course, be used in some batch, uh, batch sort of converting your data to TechPlot CISL um, if you see that there is a huge, um, yeah, that it's uh, way faster going that way. Um, yeah, TechPlot Chorus, I spoke about it. Uh, TechPlot Chorus is the right choice um, for you to... Um, if you have to do with CFD campaigns or with measurement campaigns, this is another product. So what you see here on the right side, and this is another, in, uh, not a, I shouldn't call it a pro product, but it's another software. So it's automatically installed. If you install TechPlot 360, then you will have Focus available on your computer. And um, then just let us know if you have more questions about it. Basically, what it, what it is, is it's a management system which uses TechPlot 360 to create results like pictures. Um, and then this is done in an automated way. You have filters for, um, for that. And so it's a, yeah, it's a pretty, it can be a pretty exciting thing if you are interested in having an uh, optical overview uh, over your multiple 
um, simulation results. Um, if you know TechPlot already pretty well, what is, it actu what is actually new in TechPlot in quarter one? Um, we have something nice, a contour, a header now allows automatically user text. I'm not sure if you, are, if you have seen that. Um, it's a nice thing. The specify equations allow something nice. It allows now ignore divide by zero error. That's pretty cool. So um, if you have a zero division um, problem in your equation, which of course can happen, um, then um, it simply will ignore it and it will put it to the system le um, limits, yeah, plus minus um, the limit, and you haven't an issue with that. Um, then we have a um, better support for log time scales now, which you would see if you are working uh, with animations and if you have a, let's say, yeah, logarithmic time scale, um, let's say for atomic waste uh, disposal or things like that, then it's very, very likely that you will not have a linear scale. Um, and we have an uh, increase for it about factor 25 if you have a huge number of zones uh, which plays a role, um, yeah, if, if you have, um, yeah, my title, mostly I think it's about um, the regular grids and um, that's new. But what comes next, this may be your, your next question, um, what we will do is to support in the future nonlinear elements and wire loader. So what will happen is that your nonlinear um, uh, code um, the data will be loaded and TechPlot will check for it and um, then it will be subdivided. So what you will get then is here in this case, what you see here um, is a subdivision of uh, here in this case eight sub-tetraheders and then you get a smooth surface. So that's, that's on the agenda I think even for the next release. And what you will uh, get uh, soon is um, if you know TechPlot, then you will know that we have those zones, so you easily can change uh, zone styles and so on, which we see today, of course, in our little presentation. Um, but here we have the option, then um, we will change the wording a little bit. It will be called um, parts in the future, I think. And uh, then um, you have something like a real history for what happened to those, to those parts, which parts have been created, and so on. And this is uh, something which is relevant for your um, time-dependent data. So if you have, um, have non-stationary data, uh, then this will, be, uh, this will play a big role. And this is very exciting to see. So um, I'm not sure if this is in the next release or the release after, but that's the near future of TechPlot. But I would say enough words from my side, and now I do a very fast presentation of uh, TechPlot basics, and um, let's directly start. So first things first, um, I will start uh, my TechPlot. So let's go for cleaning up my other screen. Now I start TechPlot and what happens is that TechPlot already always starts with the so-called welcome screen. The welcome screen is something nice. Um, you see there the option to load directly data or on the right side you see documentation. Yeah? Of course you have a lot of documentation and in TechPlot you have really uh, awesome uh, quality of that documentation. Uh, you will see that if you if you ever check your manuals, but of course uh, you will have support to uh, under, under maintenance. That's pretty clear. So um, you can ask as as many things as you like to. Uh, just to let you know that here is interesting information, like the PyTechPlot guide. You will always, if you are writing Python code um, with TechPlot, then you will always have that open because there's always a nice example included um, where you can all uh, see um, how it should work. Um, okay, let's go for uh, first for a very big data set so that you see um, this um, sizzle um, thing. So let's go for uh, my main directory here. Excuse me, it's over here. There we are. And here we go to the folder. First, I change the loaders. Here the first thing you will note, you have a big bunch of data loaders. So it's, um, it's everything is there for FEA, for CFD, for experimental data, like an Excel loader or general text loader for experimental data. So um, 
uh, everything should be here. And I will start with some tech plot data, which is uh, in um, CISL data. Let me just check here where here we are. That's it. And uh, here we check the folder. This one hard plane. First, you please note that we have five period eight uh, gigs on the hard drive. And if I open the data set, um, then it should not take too long, perhaps uh, three, four, five seconds or something. And then you already can see something. And so if you may ask yourself, um, how comes, um, oops, how comes that it's so fast? Uh, the trick is that TechBot always decides what to load. And in this case, it just loads some surfaces. And if we're going to rotate the data, then I will reset my origin point. Now here you see the data set. And now I can do things with the data. But before I do so, I just show you about the size. Remember, if we have five, five let's say six gigs on the hard drive, but only 800 megabytes are used of my 32 gigs, which my laptop in my office has. I have eight cores. It's uh, four. It's four cores and uh, four, uh, four virtual cores or eight virtual cores. And um, yeah, that's a, that's interesting too because TechPlot uses um, internally, of course, um, threads to work with huge data sets and um, to speed up things like stream traces and so on. So um, only 800 gigs are used. And now the next step is, of course, that I want to see something like a, like a slice, let's say. I go here for my um, slice details, and then um, I start with a Y slice. Let's go for Y slices. Now I place it somewhere interactively, and then let's go. Now TechPlot um, loads the data, because we are now in that subzone uh, load thing. And this means that TechPlot now checks which are the parts of the data sets which have to be activated. And if we realize that we have, uh, checking the data set info, that we have four variables of obviously the geometry is loaded. And um, if we have only one for further variable, it means that now everything would have been loaded normally, right? But if we compare it here, then we see that currently one period four gigs are used of my 32, which means that it's impossible that TechPod has loaded everything because it's uh, uh, six gigs on the hard drive. So you see here how that um, sizzle technology um, has an impact uh, because you can work with your data and you um, even with smaller, smaller computers, you can uh, load huge data sets um, uh, which is allowed with this uh, nice technology. Okay, but let's go uh, on with um, um, another data set. So I think this is enough. Oh, I forgot to show you. That's, of course, important. And um, the data set has 231 million points or 210 million elements. And that's a big bunch of um, elements and nodes. But I have no problems at all on my um, on my laptop. I think the laptop is about uh, five years old or something. Not sure. It was a pretty good one, but nevertheless, it's just a laptop, and I have no problems to load such a huge data set. No issues. Okay, let's go on. And uh, now, what I'm showing you is a way smaller data set. But um, the reason why I show you this one is simply um, that it's uh, some, something where I can explain a lot. Um, the other one is yeah big, but uh, not too exciting to ex explain things. That's the point. So let's go for a fluent case in here. And so I change to the fluent data loader. I already did it, as you can see here. OK, let's check. Uh, I marked all the cases, right? I did, yeah. Um, so here's my data set. <clears throat> the first thing you will note is you can interactively um, change everything. So right mouse button, you have menus and so on. Um, super fast to reach things. Yeah. If you want to have a, you have a sub part here in the zone. You, you can see his own style. You see what, uh, let's call it parts you have, and you can um, change the style of everyone. Like you want to have a mesh only here, just one mouse click and it's done, and so on. Um, that's absolutely easy to to deal with. And so, but the first thing you will note here is the so-called frame. Yeah, you can work with those frames, um, and you can have, have as many frames as you like to. 
And if this gets too much on your screen, I mean, it shouldn't be a problem because you can zoom in your working um, fold in your working space. Yeah, and um, what you can ask do is to snap it on your paper, so you can assign a precise paper on, on millimeters or centimeters, and you can exactly plan how your plot, how big is it, um, if you print it out, and so on. Um, so there are a lot of options. Um, so you can have as many frames as you like, and if this, uh, nevertheless, if the overview is a little bit lost, no problem, then you just use another page. And then you create new pages for new projects, like you have one thing where you have mostly XY plots, and then you are interested mostly in 2D plots for comparison of different data sets. Yeah? That's important to understand for, uh, about TechPlot. You have so many data loaders, and it's easy to combine all your data. You can load from data from different sources, like simulations, like from experimental data. Then you easily create diffs between the data and so on. Um, all of this is possible in TechPlot. Um, but if we focus first, okay, we have a uh, frame here. First, we have only one frame. Now, the next thing is you note here you have the graphical mode. So you have the choice in TechPlot to work in arbitrary modes like 3D, 2D, X, Y, uh, no problem. We start here with uh, 3D, and I do, do just a little, a few things to make that plot looking nice. So let's just say I want to use edges. I don't like the edge type. So I change here now um, the edge type. Let's go back. Let's go away from borders. Let's change to creases. Creases is nice. Shading is not needed. Here we are. And uh, now I would like to have a slice included. So let's place a slice here. Uh -huh. Now I would like to place some stream traces there. So I go here for stream traces. It's not the best choice for transient data because we have a transient data set. But of course we have options like um, for transient cases, particle paths and streak lines and so on. All of this is possible. But this is just a super, super fast introduction here. I change now to Y slice. Let's place a Y slice here. Okay, nice. Now um, I would like to uh, do an animation. Let's move the agenda, uh, let's say, here. I'm pretty happy with it, but I'm, I, what, I, what I don't like too much is that I don't have the time step available. For that, we have dynamic text, so you can even draw or plot with tag plot. So you can place text here or uh, include images, which is uh, relevant if you have to do with uh, geophysics, let's say, and so on. But to do so, um, uh, to save time, I just use a quick macro panel, which I often use, and so I, I'm, I don't have to um, always do the same things again. So I just go here to my tag plot working directory. I just place my... Um, macro panel here. Now I filled it up with tons of uh, things I, I would like to do with my data. One nice example is that I can do now for with one click um, cutting the slice and do clipping, so-called clipping. You see here the change Yeah, if I'm clipping or if I disable clipping, so nice features. Or in my case, what I wanted to show you is I add now time to the plot so I double click here on my macro and I just say I want to have a precision of five um, digits, and now I have my time here, and now uh, it looks even it looks uh, better if I have my animations. And if I'm speaking about animations, then for all kinds of animations, you of course can create awesome movies. So let's go here for the details, and here you see the movie symbol. And um, yeah, that's how you would then create movies in different formats, MPEG, AVI, and etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So um, that's nice. Okay, I'm ready now with my um, with my uh, 3D plot, and I'm happy about it. So let me rescale it, put it somewhere else. Now I extract the slice here. Let's go with the right mouse button, for example. Uh, sorry, right mouse button, extract, uh, slice over time, extract, and now I create a. Um, I, I, I need to um, I need to hurry a little bit. Um, so let's just do the following. I uh, just copy and paste my frame now to use it again. So I just click on the border. I go for the border here. So I'm not sure. I have a problem. Do you see changes? Uh huh. This is, um, hmm, okay. Not sure what's going on. Um, I 
from it looks a little bit like my screen is frozen just give me a second to restart um it it, it just um you won't see any changes it just i'm doing something sorry about it i think it comes from the connection from the internet connection not sure Ha, huh, that's interesting. Okay, let me try out something. Control C, Control V. Wow, that's confusing. I've never seen that before. Okay, um, I will. I will. I need to restart. I'm very sorry about that. I'm not sure if if it comes from the connection which I have. Um, that's confusing. So I restart TechPlot, and now I will not explain anything, but just load the data and do uh, do the things. Okay, um, let me load some data. Open, and without any explanations, let's continue like I did before, activating edges. Um, switching the edge type. To creases. Now switching off shading. Activating a slice. Switching to Y slices. Um, perhaps another color, but I want to save time. I just do it now as it is. I extract the slice now. Extract. Extract the slice. It's done, and now I rescale my window, and yeah, that's what I expect to see those little markers here, which was not the case. Not not, not sure what happened. Maybe uh, a conflict between the graphics. Uh, okay, what is that? Control. Move it. Yeah, okay. Hmm. Good. Um, yeah, to save time now, um, I can switch to the 2D mode here. I want to show you that we have 2D mode available. Here I would do some changes now too. I would a change the axis and so on. But you have easy mechanisms to just load a frame style and then you're ready. Um, so here we go just for a um, style sheet and then let's check what we have here. I have a 2D style sheet. I just open it and this is something which I already saved and I can reuse it directly. There would be some slight changes here now. For example, the agenda should be smaller and so on. You have the complete freedom in TechPlot to change anything exactly the way uh, you like it. So you have millions of options to um, really create the perfect plot. So here now we have a 2D plot. Perhaps I move that a little bit here or something or resize and so on. You can imagine. So here we are in the 2D mode and don't forget we have all graphical modes. We have 3D, 2D. Now let's go to analyze it further and I use a tool here and I, now I want to show you an um, XY um, plot. So I go here. I have my XY plot here. And once again, of course, you have the option now to do some simple changes, line color and so on. It look, will look in the end very good, but if you did it before, um, like today for saving time, and then of course I recommend to, um, to once again to, um, to prepare your frame styles and then, then just load one. And if you do so, you have your plot already there. And with, let's say, Control F, the so hotkey, Control F here. Now you see two lines in a line plot. So 3D mode, 2D mode, XY line mode, and then we can couple frames. So for example, we can go here for frame linking and the solution time should be linked because we have all the same here. The solution time is all the same in all the frames. And so you will go now here for um, the animation and you see that the animation is done in all frames even for the XY frame where you see the, uh, see the time slider. Okay, um, next thing is export quality. So it's very important that you have really amazing plots in the end if you export them. That's my next step. So I go here, for example, for an arbitrary width of the picture, let's say 2,000 
points or something, anti-aliasing if you like, and if you write that out now, um, I would write it probably temporarily here um, somewhere, and then let's go for that. The name is always a little bit cryptic here, um, what TechPlot suggests, but let me call it test PNG already exists, yes, overwrite, done. Um, having done this, um, I just check uh, for the plot, and I go for the um, my folder here, temporary test PNG. Let's open that, and I open it with the, uh, this tool here, let's say, earphone view. Yeah, well, I did something, I did something wrong. I exported now all the frames, unfortunately. Uh, I wanted to export only one frame, uh, but this is okay. What you see here is the graphical quality, and if we choose the original size, then you would see how it looks. And yeah, you can imagine um, how it looks if you have single plots, uh, so you have arbitrary resolutions and so on. That's really an amazing quality. Okay, that's about exporting. So now the last step is about automation. I try to hurry here. And uh, there we have that exciting um, Python interface. And um, as a little example, what it means is, let's say that you have a data format which you cannot load yeah, in TechPlot because the loader is not there. In Python, it's not a problem because in Python, you will have a chance somehow to load your data. And if you have it in Python, then you easily push the data into TechPlot. I'm not speaking about exporting. I'm really speaking about that you directly can use libraries for Python and then continue your work and the visualization uh, with TechPlot and with Python. That's uh, absolutely amazing. And to give you um, the, another point is if you want to export things. Let's say you want to export a format which is not available, like STL for CAD systems or something. No problem. In TechPlot, if the data is there, then you can directly write your Python code to export things directly from, from TechPlot. Another example, if you have mathematics which have to be applied, yeah, I, I continue while I'm speaking to uh, load my little example. So um, let's say that you, let me go to the correct folder first. Um, yeah, that you want to do mathematics, as the mathematics is not available on TechPlot. You have a multidimensional um, convolution integral or whatever, yeah? And this has to be done in TechPlot. Um, then it's not a problem because all the mathematics is given in, in Python in combination with NumPy, SciPy, and uh, that's the way how, how you work there. So now I load the data set. The data set is pretty big. It's a, it's a, it's a simple one. It's just a, an own creation. It's something like a 3D wave function, which I loaded. And if we check for that, then we see that we have here currently available uh, 125 million points. Yeah, so it's, it's a big one. Yeah? And what I want to do is to um, have, a, have a histogram from what I see here. Yeah, so what I did now is the following. I already showed you that quick macro panel. And um, now I'm going for back to the folder. I will draw again. You, you, of course, you can automatically um, let it load that, um, quick ma that macro panel. That's possible. Mm. I do it just manually here because I don't need it every day. So here it is. And what I did now is to uh, put here... Um, a Python file, basically, so a starter script for a Python file, and this is doing now the histogram. And uh, what it means is it will, in this case, connect to my running tech plot, so we have the option here, to connect to running tech plot to remote control, completely tech plot. Yeah, that's possible. But you, of course, you don't need to. So if your workflow um, is another, in another way uh, that you would like to do it automatically in the background and don't have to uh, use an open tech plot, that's fine. Of course, that's the main way how the customers work with that feature. I am usually showing this one here with the interactivity with the running tech plot. Why? Because it looks more impressive, to be honest. So um, let's go for creating the histogram. And what's happening now is that a Python script starts after some macro commands. So this allows me to select now zone number one. I have only one. Uh, the variable number is number four. And um, that's it. And how many bins? So it asks for the statistics for the histogram. Yeah? Um, the histogram mathematics obviously is simple. Yeah? It's not that it's um, super complex. It's just counting um, points or cells or so. 
uh, nevertheless, um, you can imagine that if you don't have that feature directly available, then it's very nice to have, for example, NumPy, SciPy, and then you have there, um, of course, it's very fast. Let's say that you have um, 89, whatever, 89 bins or so. Then I click now OK, and now the script will start in the background. And um, I did not use my um, stopwatch today. Usually I, I show that then, um, I would show it to, to my uh, public. Uh, it's, it's about 20 seconds, let's say. And this is even, um, this is even a little bit too slow compared with the batch mode uh, because in the batch mode it would be dramatically faster uh, because TechPlot, yeah, TechPlot wouldn't be open. But it's possible. And you, 20 seconds, 125 million uh, points, I would say that's not bad, really not bad. And the source code is super simple. I will, of course, not for, for, for time issues, I will not go deep into my source code. But basically, it's nothing else but to having a histogram function from numerical Python from NumPy and using the tech plot library here. So I use the module tech plot, and that's it. And the rest of the script is nothing else but to connect to my running tech plot, to having access to the data set, to the zone, to the variable. And after four or five lines, I al already uh, do the mathematics. So now I do the mathematics to the, the data which I got from TechPlot, and now this presentation part comes, and in those few Python commands here, I do a loop over all the bins, and I create now the histogram which you saw on the screen, and that it looks good. The reason is that I just load a style sheet as a Python command in the end, um, which makes it super fast. I, or, I even exported an image with a one-liner um, from, from my Python script, which I didn't show you here, but just to let you know. So this helps you a lot, um, this Python interface, um, for uh, doing, as in my case, uh, mathematics, or uh, like in this case, loading unknown formats for TechPlot into TechPlot, or like here, um, where is it? Um, there's this STL. Um, exporter script, I, here we are, export to STL, that's a Python script which takes your data and ISO surfaces, creates, um, I, creates triangulated data from that, which is STL, that's the name for it, and then it writes it directly out. So, you have absolutely no limits anymore, of course you can do all your automation, you can include TechPlot, and what is the great thing here is that you have the combination, now you have Python, um, as, a, um, as a programming language, and, but you use um, TechPlot for the graphical representation as well as the things. So you are not forced to use another graphical representation because you will know how beautiful the TechPlot plots are looking. Yeah, that's a big, big reason why customers so often use TechPlot. They are just looking good. And now you have the option to optimize your, your plot. For example, here you see that counts is, of course, not in the ideal um, uh, position. Now you m would move it to the left. Then you would um, go with the axis. You would move the axis here a little bit to the right and things like that. So this, all of this is done interactively, and you don't waste any time with any scripting here. So if I'm asked why not to use, uh, let's say, Matplotlib, yeah, why, why not to use it? And because then you have not the plotting quality of TechPlot, and you have not the interactivity. So you are not forced to do any, um, all of the commands um, in, in Python. And you see here, we have even a Python recorder, so that even if you want to do things like making a color uh, a line, which is black, green, no problem, then you just record the, um, the, the commands, and then you just reuse them in your Python script. Okay, that was super fast introduction into TechPod. Let's come back in, uh, to the last, I think, the last PowerPoint slide. Um, so, um, thank you very much. I, I may have forgotten the half of what I wanted to show you today, but I was limited in time, of course, and um, of course I want to give over to Yves-Marie for Fieldview. And I'm Jens Varkal, that's my email address, um, but I'm pretty sure that you will contact um, K4 Metrics um, for your contacts. And yeah, I thank you very much, and I would give back now um, the control.